Excellency, I happen to be the Vice Chancellor of Alupe University, also previously a member of the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform, and a member of the party that recommended this model. And we agreed, which is You know, let, let's be, let, let's, let, let's listen. You know, we are intellectuals. Yeah. You know, and intellectuals, you, you listen to reason. Yeah. You know, we are not a mob. We are, we are people who want to reason. And I like what uh, Junior here, Kisero, he said. He said, we want to listen. We want to challenge. You know, and we want to be part of the solution. So let us listen. And, and you can challenge what the professor is saying the, the same way you are challenging what I'm saying. I mean, it's the, light, it's the right thing for intellectuals. Professor. Your Excellency, I'm going to pick on a course in my university, which we are beginning in September, and that is a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. A Bachelor of Science in Nursing, in preparation for that program, we've had to spend almost 3.8 million to prepare equipment for nursing, even before we start. It's not the same as preparing students for teacher education, where I need the four walls, I need a micro teaching lab, which does not cost even a quarter of what it will cost me to prepare a nurse. And indeed, the skills lab for nursing alone even when Q was telling me I'm ready, they have still been given other things to buy. They're going to cost me 1.67 million. So preparing a nurse is, as, is very expensive. And so we cannot have the same cost for preparing a teacher, preparing a doctor, preparing a lawyer, like the differentiated unit cost was doing. Indeed, colleagues and our students who are here, some of our universities were paying us 60% of our salaries using the old model. But right now, if I am able to get the correct banding for my students, Your Excellency, I'll be able to support even capital development within my institution within the next two years. And that is the truth of the matter. I will not have to beg for money and ask for money and wait for capitation. But I do take on board your concerns about the correct banding so that there is a normal curve depending on how we deal with our students. So, Your Excellency, I will say all courses don't cost the same. And our students should appreciate that if we get this money and we don't do our best with that money, then we are responsible for what is going to happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Um, Richard also um, said maybe there is a problem with the mode of implementation. Maybe there are good ideas, but there is a problem with the mode of implementation. Richard, let me take you back a bit, if you allow me. I have had occasion to sort out two other problems, like this one, in our education sector. When I became Minister for Higher Education, for 19 years, students had to wait for two years before you can join university. And nobody wanted to sort it out because it was difficult. Every minister dodged, you know, danced around it because people don't want to solve problems. It is easy to color problems. Oh, we have a big problem. You know, talk about the problem. Explain the problem. You know, but it's difficult. I have, I, I, it's okay for people to talk about the problems. I see many people. Oh, you know, there's this problem. 
the students are being placed in the wrong band. This model is not good. But I have tremendous respect for the people who have ideas on how to solve the problem, on how to come up with solutions. Yeah? So, I sorted out the problem of university students having to wait for two years. It was difficult. I was called names. I was, people said I was going to destroy the education system. But we were incurring huge losses. You know, a student finishing from four and waiting for two years, many of them, by the time they were going to university, many of them had dropped out. Others had gone to pursue other things. Some of the girls had gotten pregnant. You know, and it was just chaos. So I took it upon myself and drove a program that eventually, in one and a half years, we sorted out the problem. Number two, we had a big issue, a big conversation, as I told you earlier, about education and the absence of technical education in our system. I took it upon myself, and I am very proud today that from 20, 30,000 students in our Tibet, we today have 700,000 students, and we don't have a skills gap that existed before. Again, it took a lot of courage. This, too, is one such challenge. I'm asking you guys, let us solve it together, the way Junior here said. And we can do it together. We can do it. So, let me combine what, uh, before I come to Melody on lead disbursement, let me go with what, to what uh, Kisero Jr. or Tieno said. He said, what was wrong with the old model? Yeah? Number one. Number two, why don't we amend the old model? Yeah? And number three, why don't we do it together? Uh, junior, let me call you that. Uh, you're so right. I will tell you what was wrong with the old model. And then, I will tell you what we are doing with a new model and how we can do it together. I don't know even whether it is me to say what was wrong with the old model. The old model was almost destroying our education. Because, number one, it assumed that all the courses were the same, number one. It also assumed that government had the money to pay 80% for everybody when it did not. And the results were disastrous. Scott Theological College, a university, closed down because of the old model. Many universities here, when I came into office, because of the old model, 23 out of 40 public universities were bankrupt. And if you are going to a university that is bankrupt, explain to me what kind of education you are going to get from a university that is bankrupt. Friends. And um, are there university chancellors here, vice chancellors here, who know how serious that is? What was the, the situation? Yeah? Are they, are they here? Vice chancellors? Say many. You know, if, if, if the old model was working, tell these students the old model was good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, let, let, uh, let's, let's go back to the old model. Yeah? 
So the vice chancellors are here. Any vice chancellor want to tell us, uh, yes, uh, uh, who this lady here? Or, uh, oh yeah, here, from Embu University. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Your Excellency. I want to say that, um, indeed, as you've seen, the, the only model was getting our universities. And I stand here on behalf of all the universities because I'm the chairman of the Vice Chancellor's Forum. And therefore, I can talk on that mandate. And I would want to say, as of June 2023, 17, I mean, 23 out of the 40 universities were technically insolvent. And uh, the round one of this model, which we just started last year, has been able to get many of those universities out of that uh, pit. And we have done simulations that we have seen in three years' time, in three, four, in three to four years' time, all the universities will be, will have a turnaround. And we all stop being uh, insolvent. And uh, therefore, I would want to say, as Vice Chancellors, Your Excellency, we support this model. Because um, it's a model that we see is going to do to turn us around. For example, I would want to say, University of MP is one of those that. Uh, would have been otherwise technically insolvent. In fact, in that list, I'm number 17. But I can say, as of now, we are in the positive. And it's only one round. I, we own the, our, our, our lecturers. In, because of the old model, when we raised the CMBAs, we could not be able to pay the new salaries. And I owned, we owned our lecturers and our staff members arrears for two years. And because of this new model, last June, May and June, we were able to pay those arrears for two years. So right now, University of Empire is clean. We owe nobody nothing. So it's a, it's, it's a model, Your Excellency, we want, to st we, we want to support because uh, you can draw a line and we would, would have told you when all the universities will be technically insolvent in this country. But uh, we know now that uh, there is a turn around, and we are going to get out of there. Thank you, Your Excellency. Let me, let me say this, uh, my friend, Junior. The model, the, the, the student-centered model, is actually an improvement. In, the, in your own words, you said, why don't we improve? Why don't we take the old model and make it better? This is exactly what we are doing. The household contribution was there. It is there in this model. The scholarship was there. It is there in this model. The loan was there. It is there in this model. The only difference we are making is that we are looking at how do we make children from vulnerable families, how do we assist them? How do we make sure that when we send students to a university, we also give the university resources to make sure they teach the course for which they have admitted the student? It is true. I mean, it is a fact that it doesn't cost the same to teach one course as against the other. And this funding model is sensitive to that. It is also sensitive to students who come from vulnerable families. I know I have been accused correctly that I sometimes think too much about poor people and, and I push you know, the, the rich people to do things for the poor ones. But, I mean, that is society. You know, you, 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 I don't know how to put it. But anyway, that is, uh, that is that. So, you have just told me, uh, Junior, 
that among the universities that we owe a lot of money is Kemo, your university, right? Do you know why we owe Kemo a lot of money? It's because of the old model, which you are telling me, let us go back to the old model. How will Kemo get out of the hole? If we continue with the old model, it means Kemo continues to accumulate debt. You know, friend, let us, let us deal with this as openly, as transparently as possible. You know, the vice chancellors who are sitting here are not madmen and women. You know, for them to agree for us to work with this model. They, they've seen what happens with the old model. They participated. We worked with them. We worked on simulations. We brought in experts to look at because the one thing we cannot do is to compromise on the quality of our education. The old model is compromising on the quality of our education because if lecturers are not paid, if material is not available to train our doctors, if workshops are not working to train our engineers, we will end up with the wrong engineers, we will end up with the wrong doctors, we will end up with the wrong teachers, and we will destroy our country. It will be very reckless of us. It will be very irresponsible of us. Me as president, these vice chancellors as managers of our universities, you as students, for us to accept, to walk a path that leads to the destruction of our country and our education for that matter. Um, Melody has said, and Jerry has said, let disbursement. I agree with you, that is part of what brought us to this very unfortunate situation. The reason why we put together this new funding model is so that we are clear on what our requirements are. And I have made a deliberate decision that I'm going to invest more money in education. Because if we don't get education right, we will get nothing right. Because we will, everything will go wrong. And I don't want to throw money at a problem. I want us to invest money in a plan that is well thought out because I would have just decided to put money. But you put money in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a model that's not working, you don't solve nothing. It is the reason why I invested a lot of time, I brought in a lot of professionals, and I'm willing. Just the same way, Junior, you said, bring forward ideas. Let us look at this model again. If there is any improvements we can make, if the student body can come up with uh, improvements, let us subject it to scientific uh, uh, evidence, and let us see how we can improve it. The improvement is what we are doing. We are improving on the model that was to make it better. Um, so, uh, Jerry, we have taken time this time round to make sure that as we implement this model, it is tied to our financial resources. We have clearly identified how much money we need. You know, we base the old model on assumptions, which assumptions were wrong and almost collapsed our education system. This time around, we are using empirical figures. That's why we are feeding them into our budget so that we give the universities the money that is enough to teach every student for the course that they have been admitted. It is not necessary for us to tell a, 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 a university, teach for us this doctor, and we have given them money enough to teach a teacher. It is not right, because they will not, they will not do it. And if they do it, we will end up with a half-baked half uh, uh, 
um, graduate. Brian Waka, usalama. Umesema ya kwamba pale university, munataka